<clears throat> okay, so, so now you've seen the problem. Now at this point, um, if we had come to the computer screen and actually watched the computer screen uh, while this was happening, we, we would have found this problem a lot sooner. But we all thought, including all the people that I was consulting with, that this had to be a DMX problem, that there's something between the board and the dimmers that's causing this to happen. Because nobody has ever seen this happen before, apparently. So at this point, we didn't look at the computer screen. We just started eliminating things in the system. We went first to the Ethernet link, which we don't use. We took that cable out of the system, ran the queues again. Again, it happened. The next thing we did was eliminate the RFU, the, which is the remote, remote focus unit line. Again, we still had the problem. Then we just started going backwards. We eliminated universe C because we don't use it. Still had the problem. Next, we eliminated universe B, which we are using, but we wanted to see if that could be the problem. We eliminated it from the system. Still had the problem. Now, at this point, we're left with the line between the light board and the dimmers. That's it. There's nothing else in the system. No other D DMX devices, nothing. So I got a little stuck here. I thought, well, okay, it's either the light board or the dimmers, but how do I eliminate one or the other? We went through and checked all the connections. We replaced the cable, just in case it was the cable. We checked all the connections inside the box. Uh, we checked out the dimmers, reset them. Again, still had the problem, couldn't make it go away. So a friend of mine suggested, well, if you, if you can identify the channel that's flashing, then you know what dimmer it is. So if you can take a DMX device and plug it directly into the light board, assign that DMX device to that dimmer, and if that DMX device does that problem, if you see it move or flash or whatever it's gonna do, then you know that it's the board because you've eliminated the dimmers from the system. So the nearest thing we had was, uh, was this IQ unit, this moving mirror unit. And we, so we brought it up to the light board and we patched it into dimmer 42, which is the dimmer that's uh, the channel and dimmer that are causing this problem. So, but at this point now, we, we can't see any lights flashing on stage, so we're not sure, well, how are we going to know if it, what if it, what if it just gets a signal for a second and it doesn't actually, it's not enough of a signal to make it move. So how are we going to know? So at this point, we decide we're going to watch the computer screen. And when we do, we discover that at some point during the queues, channel 128, which is the channel that, that you saw flashing there, actually does flash on the screen. It actually comes up and then fades out. It doesn't run with the queues. It, it, it maybe usually starts to flash at the beginning of a queue, but it's not a multi-part queue. Even if it's not an auto-follow queue, it just flashes on and then fades back out. So now we're all really scratching our heads. So just to make sure, we eliminate the IQ from the system. And by the way, the IQ did in fact move when that channel flashed, the IQ mirror swung and then swung back again. So we know now that it is affecting the DMX devices that are coming out of the board. So we eliminate that, and now all we have is the light board sitting by itself, nothing else is attached to it, and we run that set of cues, and channel 128 flashes. Now before you think this is a programming error, I can show you that if you go back through the cues, if you go backwards through the cues, that channel never comes up. If you go to those cues individually, that channel never comes up. The only time it happens is if you run the cues in sequence to where the channel comes up where it's supposed to, goes out, and then you continue the queue sequence and then it flashes. If you bypass the queue where it's meant to come up, you go somewhere else in the sequence and run the queues in sequence, it doesn't happen. So the other thing that we noticed, and I'm gonna show you the computer screen. I'm going to uh, go to queue 33, which is this queue on stage prior to channel 128 coming up. And if you watch the computer screen, hopefully you can see channel 128. It's gonna come up in this queue and you can trust me that this is happening on stage. It's going to go out in the next queue. And we notice that there's this little green zero, which is supposed to happen. You can also see the same green zeros on channel one, channels 172, 171, and 150. The green is supposed to happen. It tells us that the level is lower than it was in the last queue. But what's supposed to happen is when I go on the next queue, since there is no uh, level set, it's supposed to disappear, but it doesn't. Now, as I run through these cues, you're going to watch we're going through an auto-follow sequence. It may happen during auto-follow sequence, or it may not. Okay, it didn't happen during the auto-follow sequence. Here we go. We're going to go on the next cue. This is a three-count cue with no parts, no auto-follows, no nothing, and you watch and see what happens. There it is. And you see how it came up to full, and then it went back down again. And now, so you can see it's not in these cues, and I'm just going to go backwards and if you notice when I go backwards, that little green zero disappears and we get no flashing. And if I go all the way back to Q36, 
which is the cue where it went out, you'll see that green zero pops back up. That's just letting me know that it's at a lower level than the last cue. But now I'm going to go forward again, and there's no green zero. And I also will not have the flash. Now, we don't know what this means. Nobody knows what this means. ETC doesn't know what this means. All the other board operators that I've talked to don't know what this means. So the bottom line is, this light board is going back to ETC, and they're, or the processor is going back to ETC, and they're going to see if they can figure out what's wrong with it. Um, we have done a hard clear on the console itself. Um, we have not done a clear on the hard drive. Uh, they didn't recommend that we do that. They're gonna, they'll probably do that on their own. We have saved uh, our show to disk, and we've also taken the disk to offline editor and made sure that all the cues are there. And this is where we realized that the little green zero problem was, was uh, local to the light board. Because when we ran the cues in Obsession Offline Editor, we didn't see that green zero sticking around. And so we were sort of watching it, we didn't see the flash, and then we went, hey, wasn't there a green zero that was stuck on the light board? We came back and looked at it and there was. But when you run it in Offline Editor, it's not there, and there's also no flash. So that's why we're absolutely sure that it is somewhere in this light board and that our show file is fine. Uh, one other thing that I will tell you that we did to sort of narrow it down, um, we wanted to make sure that before we'd, we moved it to Offline Editor, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't something in that particular show file that existed now. So we went all the way back to the beginning to the show files um, from before the problem first occurred. We loaded that show, ran the queue sequence, we ran the entire show, never got a flash, never got any kind of, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, other way around. We ran the entire queue sequence and we did get flashes. The queue sequences were different, so we didn't get the same lights flashing and we didn't get them happening in the same place, but we did get slight lights flashing. So that kind of told us that if those show files were okay, uh, and that was those show files weren't okay, and that was before the problem occurred, then then somehow it's all happening in the board operation. So again, we went to offline editor. Everything seems to be fine in that. So we we feel confident that we have the show on disk and that the show on disk is fine. What we don't know at this point, when, and we'll find out here in the next hour, is if the problem is inherent in the console or if the problem is inherent in the processor. Um, ETC does not have another console; they only have another processor. Now, since the processor is really just a giant keyboard, it doesn't really have its own memory. It does, sort of, but not. It, it's not as complex as what's in the processor. We have every reason to believe it's in the processor and not in the console. The unfortunate thing, though, is we won't know until we replace the processor if that's true, and we don't have another backup processor. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do is the processor is here, I'm told. It's in our shipping office, and we're going to go get it, and we're going to replace the processor, reload the show, and hopefully this problem will be gone and this processor will go away. Thank you. All right, so we're back, and we have now replaced the processor, and uh, and we're fine. And I'm going to show you why we're fine. We have loaded the show disk into this processor. Uh, we're still using our console because, as I mentioned before, we didn't we don't have a, um, a backup pro uh, console. We only have a backup processor now, but that's okay. Turns out the problem is in the processor. Um, we hooked it up, loaded our show. We've been running queues. We just ran the entire show. No flashing lights. Um, but the most interesting thing is now I can give you an example of what was supposed to happen now that you, you, you saw what was happening and what was supposed to happen on the monitor and you can see that we're not crazy and that it was not a programming error. So I'm going to run that same queue sequence that I showed you earlier and you're going to see this whole green zero thing not be a problem. And again, we haven't changed anything in the programming. We're using exactly the same show file. Um, it's just operating differently because it's a processor problem. So here we go. So we're back in Q33 here, and we're going to run this sequence again. And, and watch again, it's channel 128 that we're watching. It's, uh, it's out right now in Q33. It's going to come up in Q34. It's going to go out in Q36. And do you see, unlike what happened before, the zero went away. After it went out, the zero is gone. And we run the next sequence. And the very last cue, and you'll see we have no channel spikes. So we're all good.